again, I, I'm just so grateful for the opportunity from our pastors here this morning. Um, and uh, Judges 16, you know, is a beautiful story. I grew up uh, thinking about Samson. I grew up wanting to be Samson. I, I, I've never, you, you grow up, I grew up wanting to be somebody strong. You know, I, it, it, I, I'm, I'm half Mexican and half Polish. And I don't know where I got my, you know, my largeness from. <laughs> Not sure. And my, my dad was probably about yay high. So I, sometimes I was thinking about that. But, I, so, you know, sometimes I look at a, a power lifting, the, the strongest men in the world. And, and, and I see my brothers right there, Polish, they're all. Lifting up big things are like, you know, so I, I, I say, well, it could run in our, in our, in our gene, amen, and so, you know, but Samson, Samson was somebody who, he took, he took a bone, he took the bone of, of a donkey and killed thousands. He, he, Samson was the, was the guy that, you know, he, what, what seemed impossible to do, he was the guy who, who did the impossible. He was the guy who, who God had raised up with such a time. It was time for leadership to arise. It was time to lead my people, God said. It, it was time to, to uh, take them uh, on, the, on the journey. It was time to lead them to m my promised land. It was time to fulfill my promise. It was time to, to, to raise someone up. And he raised up Samson to govern his people, to lead his people. It just so happened, though, that Samson was a strong man, which is cool. I, I, I love the fact that he was not only a, a leader, but that he was strong. You know, and he was... He was called from, from birth. He was called uh, to, to lead, and he was called to make a difference. But right here, we see uh, a, a st the story, the account of, of Samson not doing so well. It, 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 we might have just read one account right here, but did, this happened several times where Samson was what was right there, and Delilah was right there, and she was asking for his secret of his strength. She was asking for, for what, what, what makes you so powerful, Samson? What makes you so strong, Samson? And Samson was right there just playing with her. He, he was giving her information. It just so happened to be false. She, he, so he was just playing with her. He was playing with her emotions. He was playing right there, but Delilah it, it was part of the Philistines. Delilah what, what was a part of the enemy, and here, Samson, right here, he's playing with the enemy. He's playing with, with, with the enemy, seeing how far he can go. He's playing to see if, if he can, you know, and, and he did this several times. And the other ones, uh, because he gave false information and the enemy tried to use it against him, he was able to, to the Bible says, to break free. He was able to break free as, as if uh, the, the ropes and the things that the enemy was using upon his life was, was like threads, things that were being burnt in the fire, threads, so, so, so brittle, so like nothing. And here Samson is again. But the Bible says that Delilah, man, she was just nagging and nagging. I'm sorry if I say it like that. <laughs> she was nagging, and the Bible says that she prodded him. Prodded means to poke, like if you're prodding a cattle, like to turn. The, you know, they're going the wrong way. Mm, they prod them. Hey, come back this way. She was nagging and prodding him day after day after day until he was sick to death. And again, I apologize if that's the way I said it. <laughs> and, and, and until the point where Samson, he was like, oh, I've had it. And guys, 
This isn't cool points here. <laughs> I've had it. I can't take any more. I can't take any more. And the Bible says he was sick of it to death. Now, now we see this story, and I, I, I and where, where Samson ended up because he gave up his secret. He gave up his reason for living. He gave up that, 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 that reason why he was so strong, why he was so, so mighty, why he was able to do the impossible, why he was able to defeat many, why he was able to be feared by the enemy, why he was able, man, he gave it up. He gave up that, that, that one thing that was precious to him, that one thing that what he was supposed to hold on to for the rest of his life, that one thing that he was supposed to use to lead the people of God. Samson, he ended up in the hand of the enemy because he gave it up. Here this morning, you know, don't give it up. God doesn't want you to give it up. Let's take it. A, God doesn't want you to give up. Don't give up. And don't give it up. Don't give up that one thing that means everything. Don't give up that one thing here today that can cost your life. Don't give up that one thing. Don't give it up. You know, it's that one thing. I, I, I love to, to, to always know that, man, it's one I'm one decision away from going back to where I was. Samson, he was right here. He gave it up. He ended up. In a dark place, he ended up in prison. He ended up without any eyes. He couldn't see. He ended up, uh, you know, uh, right there grinding for the enemy. You know, today's uh, title here this morning is stay on the grind. Stay on the grind. Why? Because the enemy wants you to be on grind for him. But God would rather you here today say yes to him and be on the grind for him. Yes. That word grind means to work hard. That word grind means to press hard. Here today, I really believe God wants to turn some mindsets around. God wants to turn some hearts around. God wants to encourage you. God wants to challenge you. And God wants to take you to another level with him. And But God wants you to decide here today that who you're going to grind. Who are you going to grind for? God wants you to work hard for him. See, here today, we can't serve two masters. We can't, we can't be straddling the fence here today. We can't be tiptoeing through the tulips. We, we can't be saying one day yes to the Lord and then one day yes to the, to the world. One day yes to the, wor to the Lord and then one day yes to our old life. One day yes to the Lord. You know, God wants us to make that decision today to stay on the grind for him. You know, Samson, he, he thought he could just play around. Samson thought he could, just like, just like any other time, thinking that he could break free. Break free from, from, from uh, that which he told Delilah. Break free from, from, that, from, from playing with the enemy. Break free from, from uh, 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 being uh, tied down in, in, in the midst of a situation. But the Bible says, man, Samson did not know that the Lord had left him. He did not know. A good question here today is, how close are you to the Lord? Or how far are you? 
They say you're only as close as you want to be. We need to stay on the grind for the Lord. God would rather you be on the grind for him, working hard for him, pressing in for him, for the glory of God, for the glory of his kingdom, for the glory of, of him who saved our lives. How many believe that's a great idea? How many believe that's a great plan for our lives? How many believe here today and agree with me that's a great plan for our marriage? That's a great plan for our children? That's a great plan, plan for our future. Oh, man, God, I want to work hard for you. I want to press in for you, Lord. Here Samson was, man. He was, he was grinding for the enemy. And God, he wants us to grind for him. Strength, uh, uh, Samson's strength was found in his obedience to God. In his obedience to the Lord. And because of his disobedience, he ended up in a trap. He ended up in darkness. He ended up bound. He ended up with no eyes. He ended up working, shackled for the enemy. Samson, though, his head that was shaved began to grow back. Uh, uh, I don't know about you, but just because I'm coming to church, man, my hair's growing back. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. You know, why? Because the enemy had my head shaved. Many of us have gone through that where our heads are shaved by the enemy. But because... You know, we're, we're now serving the Lord because now we're, we're stepping in to God, stepping into his presence, stepping in step with his spirit. Oh, man, my hair is growing back. My mind is getting right. My heart is feeling better. Oh, I don't know about you, amen, but man, because I come and I, I just offer up my life and I surrender my life to the Lord. Oh, happy days are ahead. Oh, man, I'm so thankful. Amen. Woo. How many can relate here today? And God is raising up some grinders right here. We're in a powerful church. We're in a powerful time. We're in a powerful moment. Uh, we're, we're, we're in a mega movement all over the world. We're, we're making an impact in people's lives. We're, we're making an impact in continents and countries and nationalities. We're making an impact in people and young people all through our urban training centers, through our victory homes, our, our, our men and women's homes all over the world. God is using victory outreach. We're in a mega movement. Movement. It's happening all over the world, and it's happening right here. It's happening in our city. It's happening in our valley. God is raising up. You know, when God wants to move and he wants to do a movement, he raises up a man. He raises up an individual. He, when he wants to do a new thing, he's looking for a person that he can do it through. His method is man. Here today, he's not a madman, but he's an on-time God. Amen. What does a grinder look like, though, in these days? Right now, what does a grinder look like? God is raising up a grind, grinders. God wants us to grind for him. Well, the example that I, I'm coming up with this morning is our nine-to-five jobs. You know, we work in the physical nine-to-five. We get up every day. We clock in, we clock out at our jobs, we work hard for our bosses, we work hard for our paychecks that come at the end of the week, and, and we work hard day in and day out, week after week, month after month, all year long. We, we, then, then we get it through the taxes, and, and we, we receive our taxes. How many like tax season? I don't. I don't. But, you know, God, that's a, that's a great example of, of how we work hard, we press in. Why? Because that's the grind that we're in, the grind of our job because of our paycheck. Now, what about a grind for our, our Lord? What does that look like? 
Well, we grind in ministry. We grind in our departments. We grind in what we're good at. We're grind, we grind in, in building his house, building his kingdom, building his church. Whose church is this? It's God's church, amen? And so we're serving him. We're living for him. We're building for him. And, and so we're, we're, we're gr grinding in ministry. And, 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 you know, some of us here today, we're going to be missionaries. Some of us, we're going to be missionaries. Some of us, we're going to be evangelists. Some of us, we're going to be pastors. Some of us, we're going to be pastor's wives. So, some of us, we're going to go to the Urban Training Center. Some of us, we're going to go all around the world for the Lord. We're going to do that. And, and we're going to grind in ministry. We're going to be serving the Lord. We're going to be helping people. We're going to be helping our communities. How many know, amen, God wants to use us to help our communities get better. God wants to use us as a resource, as a lighthouse, uh, as a Holy Ghost hospital for those that are in need. They can come into the house of the Lord and they can get what they need from the Lord. God wants to use our lives, you know. And so we have a ministry grind. But then we, we, without, without this next one, everybody say but. but. Without... Uh, without a, a spiritual grind in your ministry grind is just religion without a spiritual grind in your in your in your ministry grind it's just religion man that's the that, that's one of the reasons why Jesus came he says I'm so tired of leaders hurting my flock I'm so tired uh, of, of leaders that are, are, are playing with, with, with my kingdom, playing with my word, and playing with my God. I'm tired of that. And he says, you know what? I'm going to raise up another generation of disciples. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and raise up another generation of leaders. Leaders that will be my disciples, leaders that I will impart, leaders that I will train, leaders that I will grow, and they will make an impact in all over the world. I will make an impact all over the world, and they're not going to just be uh, showtime leaders. They're not going to be just these ones that in public, uh, you know, that they will be seen. No. They're going to be the ones that are right there in secret. The Bible says that you will go into your closet and you will close that door and you will pray and you will seek my face. You will ask and you will receive. You will seek and you will find. You will knock and the door will be open that everything you ask in my name, it shall be given. Oh, man. He, and we're talking about a spiritual grind. Without the spiritual grind in your ministry grind, it's just religion. And God wants us to be the, those ones that, 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 that seek him. That, that, that would be our grind. That we're grinding for the Lord in prayer. How many get up early and pray? How many get up early and pray? How many get up early and pray? How many is that? You're, that's the first thing you do. Is that you pray, you acknowledge God, and you thank God. Man, thank you for another day. You're making that moment, you're, you're making that, 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 that time with God. You know, to get that spiritual grind, we need that thing. We need uh, to be able to create spiritual consistency. We need to be able to be intentional with our time with God. And so we make that time, we make that moment, we make it beautiful. A timely moment with God. You know, when I, when I think about prayer and I think about his word, I think about in John chapter 3 when the disciples were on their way to prayer. And there was a man who, who for 38 years, for 38 years, imagine that. He was, he was lame. He was crippled. And people had to help him to go to the gate called Beautiful. And there was a disciples, and they went to the, the gate called Pe Beautiful on their time for prayer. And again, a miracle happened. Yes. 
right there, there was the man who was crippled and he was asking, oh, can you help me with money? Can you help me in my time of need? And the Bible says that Peter and John looked at that man and said, silver and gold I don't have, but what I give you is in the name of Jesus. It, that, that gate called beautiful, man, that, that word beautiful, it's a timely moment. See, if we're not getting uh, up for prayer or if we're not a people of prayer or if we're not uh, a, a couple that prays, if we're not a young person that prays, then we're missing out on that beautiful moment. You're missing out on a timely moment that God wants to have with you. And God wants to use that time alone, that, that, that spiritual grind, that, that time of prayer to be able to lead you and guide you and to push you and to be able to help you through your, your ministry grind. Oh, we're making an impact all over the world. We're making an impact in our city. We're going to do it one soul at a time. Amen. But the first soul, it starts with you. Where's your soul at? Where's your soul? You know, David said, man, create in me a clean heart. Oh, renew a, a right, right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not thy Holy Spirit away from me. Restore my soul. God wants to restore someone's soul this morning. God wants to restore. Oh, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Now, thank you that I look pretty good today. <laughs> and I say that very humbly, but I, you know, I haven't worn a tie for a long time. And everybody was shocked. They're like, oh, man, what's going on? Hey, hey. And I was like, hey, all right. <laughs> you know? But I didn't always look good like this. I came from the gutter. I came from behind a, a, a trash bin. What a time it was. You know? Getting, getting Dale don't. Let's give the Lord a good praise offering. Yeah. Getting day old donuts. I don't know. They used to put all their donuts and put it into a bag and then throw it in a dumpster. You know, I used to be a, an addict, alcoholic. I was an addict from the age of 13 to 23. Dark place, dark time. But oh, what God can do. Oh, what God can do. God is able to restore. God is able to renew here today. God is able, amen, to revive. I don't know who needed to hear that here today. You might be sleeping. Samson, man, to death. He, he, he couldn't handle the, 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 man, the attack of the enemy to death. And he gave up that secret. He gave up that that, that which was precious to him. And he ended up sleeping with the enemy. He ended up in the lap of the enemy. I'm here to let you know here today that God doesn't want you to sleep with the enemy, but he wants you to rest in him. Come on now, somebody. Somebody needed to hear that this morning. Because you know what? We can find rest in the Lord here today. We can find rest for the weary soul. We can find rest, amen, from the oppression of the enemy here this morning. It's not time to be found sleeping with the enemy. It's not time to be found in the lap of the enemy. It's not time to be resting our head in the lap of the enemy. Here this morning, God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life, but so does the enemy. So does the enemy. Not only does God want to call to grind, but man, there's the call of the enemy we have to deal with. That which, man, has, 
is, is, is destroying mighty people of God. Destroying mighty people of God. You know, Delilah, she was beautiful. She was a Philistine, though. And Samson was there, caught with the enemy. But the enemy's plan is to distract, to deceive, and to destroy. The enemy distracted by her with her beauty and caught Samson's eye. The enemy deceived with false love and catched his emotion. And the enemy destroyed, made him comfortable, and he caught his rest in the lap of the enemy. It's not time to be sleeping with the enemy. It's not time to be caught in the lap of the enemy. See, his goal is for us not to listen to God's voice. This morning, God is speaking to your heart. God is speaking to your life. God is speaking to your person of God, your man or woman of God. God is speaking to your character. God is speaking to, to you about life or death this morning. The devil, he, all he wants to do is drain you. All he wants to do is keep nagging, keep continuing, keep prodding. He just wants to continue. In, in, the, in the CSB, it says he pleaded till he was worn out. In the NLT, he was tormented till he was sick. In the King James Version, he was pressed daily till he was vexed to, to death. Meaning, that word vexed means he, till he doubted and he was unsettled and he was confused. I don't know about you, but that's the way the enemy, he wants to leave us and, and get us to. So that, oh, what am I doing? Well, well, what's my next step? Oh, how do I serve God? Oh, how do I live for the Lord? Oh, what, what, am I supposed to pray right now? Am I supposed to read right now? What am I supposed to pray about? What am I supposed to read? I'm here to let you know that God has called you to overcome that which the enemy is doing. He might be doing it in your mind. He might be doing it in your marriage. He might be doing it in your children. But I'm here to let you know today's the day to overcome. See, that word subdue is where Samson was, was headed. And that word subdue means an affliction to bring him down, to make him so occupied and busy to humiliate, humiliate him so that he will bow down to the enemy. But how many know, man, God is good? I said God is good. Come on and give God some praise because he is good. I get so emotional, man, of how good God is. I get so emotional. You might say, well, you're a big guy. I got a big heart. And you know, I just, man, I can't believe what God has done in my life. I, I think about that all the time. And I also, I also think about, man, what God is doing in our church. It's so exciting what God is doing in our church. Because you know what? Many of you are raising up. Many of you, man, are, are saying, yes, you know what? I want to get involved. I want to build God's kingdom. I want to do my part. I, I know that there's, there's many of you here today that are being touched in your heart, and you say, man, I just want to give back to God. I just want to give back to God. I just want to give my life. I just want to give my heart. I just want to give my time. I want to give my finances. I want to give so that my children can follow and my children's children can follow. Come on now. We can't forget the promise of God upon our life in Acts 2.39 that the promise is for us. It's for our children and for those that are far off. Come on now, somebody. We can't forget. That our God is a God who promises us, and he is faithful to our promise. Come on, has God been faithful to you? Is God faithful to you? Come on, show. God is faithful, and you can stand, amen, as the worship team comes out. Man, he is faithful. He is faithful, church. He's faithful to renew. 
He's faithful to renew the mind. He's faithful to renew those thought patterns. He's faithful to replace. How many need any replacing? You know, there's so much that we get hurt with. There's so much that happens to our life that stays stuck. And the enemy, just like Delilah, the sounds and nags and points it and prods to it. And oh, look, look at what you did. Look at what happened to you right there. And some of those things, man, you're like, man, I can't shake it. Man, how come I can't shake it? How come I can't get past this? How come I'm still you know, sensing that, that, that guilt and that shame? Why, how come I can't, I can't get past this, this feeling of unforgiveness in my life? How come I can't get ahead? Well, it's because God wants to replace. He wants to replace those memories with good memories. He wants to replace it with a new journey. He wants to replace it with a new family. He wants to replace it with a new future. Come on, give God some praise for that. Because God is replacing. It doesn't matter if you're new here today or you've been around. I've been saved for 26 years this November. Saved for 26 years. And you know, over time, I had these things in my mind, and I, I still do. I still, still a lot of work to do, as you can see. But you know, God is a God who is the architect. He's the great physician. He knows where to cut open. He knows the right utensils to go in. I was thinking about that. Going back to the spiritual grind, you know, God wants not only a, 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 for us to be a people of prayer, but a people of his word. Not only does he want to, you to find time in the morning, but God wants you to find time in the morning, not only to pray, but to read his word. God wants you to take a moment and read his word because not only are we praying like oh god love you and god thank you and god you know my family god my my marriage god all this not only are we doing that and i hope you are but not only are we doing that but we're giving god you know the opportunity to to meet the need and so what god what what our time with the word does not all, so prayers were lifting up our request to the Lord, but the word God is speaking back into our hearts. God is speaking into our lives. And we have to allow the Lord to speak to us. Just like how we opened up the word today and, 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 and God is speaking just about his word. Now, he didn't say that we were in darkness. Now, he didn't say right here that we were the ones that we're, our eyes are gouged out. He wasn't, we weren't the ones that were put in shackles, that, that we were the one that didn't know that the Lord had left us. It doesn't say that. But when we're reading God's word, it's an opportunity that God could be speaking about something in our hearts and our lives. We, we always say it all the time. God wants a personal relationship with us. Come on now. This Christian walk is, is God having a personal relationship with us. I say God is getting personal with you and I. He's getting personal in, in getting personal in, in how we feel and what we think and what we see and, and what's ahead and decisions to make. He, he, he's getting personal with us being wise builders, us being you know a person who you know what is trusting in him believing in him 
sacrificing for him, man, believing that he's going to come through and he's going to give us a word. He's going to give us a promise. He's going to give us something that's going to help us to be strong in the midst of our battle. Something that's going to help us to shield uh, against those fiery darts. Something that we're going to be able to pull out the sword and be able to come against the enemy. And according to Le Leviticus chapter 26, which is one of our promises, that we are going to pull out our sword and we're going to chase the enemy. Now, I don't know about you. Now, if you haven't been reading your word, it's a great opportunity. God is speaking and he's saying, hey, hey, I want to talk to you. I want to spend time with you. And the word here today for the spiritual grind, man, we got to grind in his word. I've been challenging uh, uh, many, many brothers. Start at the book of John and read all the way to Revelation. One chapter a day. Read and read to get. How many know we need to read to get? That's the grinding. We need to read to get something. Not only getting an understanding, but getting God to speak to our heart about that which we're going through. Come on now. We're consistent to the job. But God wants us to be consistent to prayer. He wants us, we could be consistent to the job, but God wants to be, us to be consistent in his word. We could be consistent to the job, but God wants to develop spiritual consistency because he's raising up spiritual grinders. Well, thanks for joining us here at Victory Outreach West Covina. We hope you enjoyed your time. Also, I want to encourage you to subscribe and click the notification bell. That way you get notified every time we go live. You won't miss a service. Stay connected with us. And you can also partner with us in your giving if you want to bless the ministry financially so we can continue the work that God is doing here. You can do that at any time. I hope you share it. And I hope you come visit us live real soon. God bless you.